Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In our next open beta update, we plan to release updates for both the Viper and Hornet Lightning targeting bots. The Viper pod received many improvements, including cursor zero, improved hot task commands, air to air mode, and it now much better matches its real world counterpart. For the Hornet pod, we've added several new items by popular demand, like a coordinate display and the North Arrow. Let's get started. Okay, so before we jump into the aircraft, let's take a look at some of the controls that we'll be using. So our aircraft is the F-16C SIM, and as always, if you're gonna use the SIM, always make sure in the gameplay tab that the flight mode and the avionics mode are not checked. Go back to controls. Now, in terms of finding the controls, there's uh, two ways best to do this. One is the search. So we could do like a, a TMS, target management switch, just put in target, it automatically pops up this way. Or we're going to be using just the HOTAS commands. So we can go to the HOTAS category. And we have it here. Okay, so first let's take a look at the stick commands. Uh, first, we're going to be uh, DMS and TMS. So TMS is the target management switch, and the DMS is the display management switch. So here we have uh, DMS down left, right, and up. And then coming down, we have the TMS. Uh, target management switch, down, left, right, and up. Uh, the next one is the expand switch on the stick, which we right, find right here, expand, FOV button, depress. And then to the throttle, uh, the primary one we're gonna use there is the uh, manual range knob. And we have those uh, right here, uh, counterclockwise and clockwise. So those are the major uh, key commands we're going to be using uh, for this little mission. Okay. All right, so uh, first, let's take a look at the uh, targeting pod changes in the Viper. And because I'm going to be uh, head down quite a bit, let's go ahead and put on the altitude hold as well as the steering select. So this will maintain my current altitude as well as have the aircraft fly directly to the current steer point, which in this case is uh, steer point one, indicated by the filled in dot here on the HSD. So we can use the targeting pod in uh, air to ground, air to air, and even nav mode. But for now, let's go to air to ground mode. And we'll select uh, CCRP mode so we can do an LGB delivery uh, back to the HSD. On the left side, we'll turn on the uh, laser and we'll bring up the uh, targeting pod on the left MPD. Now you'll notice that we have a uh, not SOI message uh, plastered here in the center, and that indicates uh, not sensor of interest, meaning that the controls are in reference to a different display, either the uh, right MPD or in the HUD. It's actually the HUD in this case. So to uh, remedy that, we'll go aft on the DEMA switch, and that switches the SOI between the right and left MFDs. So we have a bunch of new stuff to talk about here. Uh, first, we have our grayscale, which allows you to uh, uh, calibrate your uh, display a bit better. Uh, next, we have our coordinate display, uh, lat long and elevation based on where the targeting pod is currently looking. And of course, once we have the mergs uh, integrated, that'll be an option as well. Above that, there's an option for manual and automatic uh, Maverick uh, handoff. Uh, to the right, we have our uh, manual zoom which is controlled by the manual range cursor. But also, uh, to change the field of view, we can press the expand button on the stick. And you see narrow and wide. To the right, we have our north arrow. And it's not north arrow in regards to where our aircraft is pointed, but north in reference to where the targeting pod is looking. And there's another line, which is the ground plane. And the, uh, the steeper the angle that the targeting pod is looking, uh, the more difference you'll see in the north arrow from the ground plane. Now, of course, we have our options for the different cameras, TV, white hot, black hot, back to TV. But by pressing TMS left, we can also cycle these. 
Now, as we all know, once you uh, bring up the targeting pod, it will automatically slave to the steer point. And then once you slew off that steer point, it's a bit difficult to get it back to where it was. And that's where the cursor zero comes in play, or CZ. Uh, by pressing this, it'll automatically slave the uh, targeting pod back to that slave location. In this case, this airfield, or sorry, this town up ahead. Now, also related in the earlier builds, when you uh, slew the uh, cursor, it would also, unfortunately, move the navigation steer point as well. And that, of course, has been fixed too. Uh, here we have our meter stick, uh, right now 32 meters or so. And this is in reference to the lines on the crosshairs. So right now we have uh, 14 meters. And if we place this line right here at the base of this building, we can see that this building is probably what, about 15 meters or so, or thir yeah, about 13, 14 meters in length. Let's go ahead and go to the uh, next steer point. This is the airfield. Expand back out. And you know, here we have the SP or snowplow mode. When that's selected, it'll automatically uh, place the uh, target pod looking down at one half the length of the uh, uh, current uh, range setting. And from this mode, you can still designate and move around. Let's cursor zero back to the airfield again. Uh, coming down to target, uh, once we have uh, offset endpoints, we'll have the ability to cycle between uh, the target and various offset endpoints. Uh, coming down here on the corner, we have a countdown timer. If there's no target designated for attack, it's the uh, time to reach that stair point, which is also indicated uh, here on the HUD. If you have it designated for a weapon release, it's the time to weapon release and the weapon is in the air, it's the time to impact. Uh, on the corner here, we have our uh, steering indication with the vertical line being uh, the uh, steering uh, we're shooting for. And as long as that line is centered in the uh, water line, we're actually flying to that steer point. If we're in one of the IR modes, the white hot, black hot, uh, we can press uh, AC, AGC or automatic gain control. And this allows us using the uh, push buttons here with the arrow to manually adjust uh, the levels for those two cameras. We keep it in TV for now. To designate the camera, if you press and hold TMS forward, it goes to area mode, but once you release, it goes into a point track mode. However, if you go right on the TMS switch, press and release, it goes into an area track mode. So let's come down here and we'll designate this uh, tanker, uh, hangar, sorry, in an area track. And we see uh, about 24 seconds to release and our distance based on the pod is about 7.5 miles. So lining up for release, 10 seconds to release. Release queue is coming down. Press and hold the weapon release button. and weapon away. So the button here now is the uh, time to impact. Our range to it is about 3.5 miles or an area. And in about 15 seconds, I'm gonna press and hold the weapon uh, trigger to activate the laser. And we do that, we have a flashing L1688 indicating the laser designation code. Flashing L, and also the range also has an L indicating that the laser now is providing the range data. impact. Okay, so that's a little overview of the expanded functions of the uh, air to ground mode of the Viper targeting pod. Uh, now let's take a look at the Viper targeting pod in air to air mode. Okay, so now let's take a look at using the targeting pod in the Viper in air to air mode. So you probably mostly use this for uh, visual identification at longer ranges. First thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and go air to air mode. And we'll lock up the target using the FCR. And we do that, if we bring up the targeting pod now, it'll automatically slave the targeting pod uh, to that designated radar target. So targeting pod on the right. We'll go DMS aft to make this our soy. Expand field of view. And we'll do a little zoom in and there it is. 
At this point, we'll go uh, teams forward to initiate a point track. Okay, point track. And kind of like the uh, Hornet, now we have a correlated uh, track where both radar and the targeting pod are tracking at the same time. But if we make the FCR soy and we break the radar lock, now just the targeting pod is tracking the target indicated by the broken box. And if we bring the target outside the HUD, we'll get a dashed line uh, to that target with degrees off as it passes us. So those are the basics of using the Viper targeting pod in air-to-air -air mode. Uh, next, let's take a look at some of the Hornet targeting pod changes. Now, for the Hornet targeting pod, the changes aren't quite as extensive as, say, the Viper, but some nice changes nevertheless. Uh, to start, the uh, brightness and contrast controls are uh, much more useful now. You can really kind of dial in the uh, levels that you're looking for. Uh, up here in the top left corner, we have our court display, latitude, longitude, and elevation, based on where the targeting pod is looking. And of course, we have our north arrow, which uh, indicates uh, north at the location that the targeting pod is looking. And the other line is the ground plane. So again, as you uh, increase the look angle, the separation between the north arrow and the ground plane will separate. And the, below that, we have our meter stick, which we can use the elements of the crosshair and the number here to get a pretty good feel about the uh, size of uh, ground objects. And as just a, a side note, uh, for me, when I do a designation for targeting, generally just the uh, standard uh, INR designation is more than enough. It's very rare to ever have to do a area track or point track, and the only time I'd ever really do a point track is if I'm doing a moving target. Anyhow, folks, I very much hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, preview look at the targeting pod changes for both the Viper and the Hornet. I'll see you next time. Thanks.